It is normal that our blood sugar levels change throughout the day, whether we may be stressed, whether we may be ill, depending on what kind of foods we eat. All of those factors change our blood sugars throughout the entire day, whether you're a diabetic or not. However, when our blood sugars fall below the level that's considered to be normal and we have to take action to reverse that, that is called hypoglycemia, in other words, a low blood sugar reaction. And we know that diabetics on certain medication and on insulin are a very high risk for this. So guys, today I am going to talk about hypoglycemia. In other words, a low blood sugar where we have to intervene in order to, to bring the blood sugar levels up. This is Diana Bitucci, guys. I want to thank you for joining my channel, The Voice of Diabetes. If you are new, consider subscribing and also liking the, this video and sharing with others that you think might benefit. When blood sugar levels have fallen below the normal level, which is usually 70 milligrams per deciliter or below is considered to be a true low blood sugar. In other words, a true hypoglycemic event. Normally we have to take action in order to reverse that. Every person responds to hypoglycemia very differently. What you may experience and what someone else may experience might be entirely two different feelings. The symptoms are very variable, meaning what one person may experience when they have a low blood sugar reaction is not what the other patient may experience when they have a low blood sugar reaction. However, these are usually the most reported symptoms of hypoglycemia and you may have one or several of these if you have a low blood sugar reaction. Feeling shaky is one of them, being nervous or anxious, sweating, chills or clamminess, irritability or becoming very impatient, confusion, uh, fast heartbeat, believe it or not, feeling lightheadedness or dizzy, hunger, feeling nauseous. Some people may have this color draining from the skin where they look very pale and they just don't look right. Feeling very sleepy, feeling weak or having very little energy. Having tingling sensation in the lips, in the tongues or sometimes around the cheeks. Pa patients will experience that. Um, having a headache or having problem coordinating words where you just can't really think straight. Again, that kind of goes hand in hand with confusion. Uh, nightmares or patients will say that they can wake up even crying during their sleep for unknown reasons and then of course it can lead to seizures as well and unfortunately I've seen this in my practice too much where patients will usually type 1 diabetics will have seizure induced hypoglycemia meaning that because their blood sugar level is so low they actually have a seizure as an event so um, hypoglycemic episodes you know obviously these symptoms are terrible and I don't want anyone to experience them however we know that there is insulin is the number one culprit of causing hypoglycemia because we know that insulin lowers blood sugar levels for that reason and sometimes taking too much insulin can cause a low blood sugar reaction you know taking insulin but then not eating enough for the insulin you've taken so there's or exercising more than you you've anticipated so there's a lot of different factors on why insulin can cause a low blood sugar reaction but every time a patient is on insulin or i start them on insulin i always discuss hypoglycemia because we know it can be life-threatening and obviously it can lead to death fortunately that's very rare um, but it's something worth noting and you know I want the patient and the family to be aware of the possibility and then also there's certain medications sulfonylureas which are not my favorite I do have a video on sulfonylureas which I will link up above um, but you know those medications tend to cause low blood sugar reactions although it's not insulin it's an oral agent and for the reasons that I've mentioned in the video, those are, that's the reason why we don't like that class of medication in general. There's endocrinologists that won't even use that class or very rarely use that class. I am that person. I only use sulfonylureas if I absolutely have to for the reason being that one, they can cause low blood sugar reactions and they are very unpredictable in how they work. And anything that's unpredictable scares me and obviously scares patients because we want to know exactly what we're giving the patient, what they're taking and how it will work. But anyways, kind of uh, going back to hypoglycemia, you know, a lot of patients will know based on these symptoms that they are low, but really the true way to really find out if you have a low blood sugar reaction 
is to actually do a finger stick. So manually checking your blood sugars and seeing where your level is. When you have a low blood sugar reaction, it triggers a release of epinephrine, uh, also known as the adrenaline hormone. That's what will cause your symptoms of thumping heart, sweating, tingling, anxiety, because your body is now into this fight or flight mode. And obviously your body's trying to, to fight this reaction because we know the brain is the number one organ that requires the most amount of glucose and that's why it really affects our mental status um, the first thing even if you're not a diabetic and you go a very long time without eating we all have probably experienced where we become very irritable very confused and we just cannot think as straight we become less patient and that's because our our brain requires uh, glucose to function and that will uh, that's why our mental status will be affected first um, so it's kind of interesting even for a non-diabetic but for diabetics, this is extremely crucial and ex an extremely serious issue. Treatment for hypoglycemia has improved, just like a lot of many things in the diabetes world. Fortunately for us in the diabetes community, this is always a very good news. Uh, but the treatment rule is really 15 and 15. What that means is you have 15 grams of carbohydrates to raise the blood sugar, and then you check 15 minutes later. You, you give your body some time to bring up the blood sugar, and then you check your finger stick again. So you want to repeat these steps until your blood sugar levels is above 70 milligrams per deciliter. So let's just say you check your blood sugars and you're 60 and you, you, you're starting not to feel right or you're not really not feeling right. And obviously uh, what you want to do is you want to either have glucose tablets. You can do uh, gel tubes or four ounce, which is half a cup of regular soda or juice like apple juice orange juice all of those are saturated with sugar which i've discussed before um, one tablespoon of sugar honey or corn syrup those are usually appropriate you know hard candies such as jelly beans those are also appropriate because they will they are saturated with sugar and they will bring up your blood sugar levels so you want to have one of those and then give your body about 15 minutes and recheck a manual finger stick again a finger stick blood glucose and make sure that you know you're starting to feel better and that your blood sugar level is above 70. Normally I tell patients I really want you to be above 80 or 90 if you are on insulin and you're having a hypoglycemic reaction. It's important to have something that is a simple sugar just like the ones I mentioned. You don't want to have something like chocolate usually because chocolate can have a lot of fat in it and we know that fat delays the absorption of glucose so therefore it might not be the best option for you you, um, just because it might not rapidly bring up the blood sugar the way that we want it to bring it up like orange juice or apple juice would or just plain sugar um, so that's why you want to be careful you don't want a complex carbohydrate or something with very high fat content you know as mentioned chocolate because you might not see the the rise in blood sugar levels the way that you want to uh, those treatment options are really for um, hypoglycemia but however unfortunately there is something called severe hypoglycemia where the blood sugars are very significant at that point um, treating with the 15 15 rule is usually not recommended at this point we do recommend emergency use of glucagon and now fortunately for us there's so many better options you know the traditional uh, glucagon emergency kit is kind of uh, fading away we're not really using those as much anymore because we have things like Vaccini, which is a nasal spray glucagon that you can spray into your nostrils and normally i always order two i give one to the patient and then i give one to a family member in this case uh, when the blood sugars are very low we do not recommend putting something into your mouth because it can become a choking hazard so if you are not sure if your blood sugar is that low but you don't want to take the chance then normally i do recommend either the nasal glucagon or also the GVO, which is a, um, it's already a prepared um, injectable medication. So it's already a prepared pen that all you do is you inject, you know, anywhere in your body, really. And in the case of an emergency or a family member can administer it and it doesn't have to be stored in the fridge it doesn't have to be pre it's already pre-mixed and already ready to go literally you take the cap off and all you do is inject and that's um, called gvoke which i'm starting to use a lot of so normally if i have patients on insulin or insulin pumps i normally prescribe no one leaves my office without a vaccine 
or a GVOC prescri prescription. And of course, if the blood sugars are becoming, you know, if you're really worried, then you need to call 911 because we know that you can have a seizure and you can go into the coma. And obviously death is always uh, a possibility when those things happen. Continuous glucose monitors have really changed the way that we practice medicine. They've really improved the quality of life of diabetics, people who are on insulin, because they have alarms that will alert, alert you before you're reaching a low. And that is very crucial because before you are even low, the continuous glucose monitor will, will trend that you're in a low, that you're heading in the low direction and you can intervene before you ever reach this level where you need to really intervene with an emergency glucagon. If you feel hypoglycemic, remember that the continuous glucose monitor can always lag behind a little bit. So if you're reading, if you're reading 90, you could in fact be 70 or a little below. It's just that the sensor is measuring the serous fluid and it doesn't, it did, does not catch up as quickly. So I always tell my patients, this is why you need to have an old fashioned glucose meter with you where you do a manual finger stick if you feel low and you always want to treat the finger stick, not the uh, CGM blood sugar reading. So I just want you guys to be aware of that. that if you are in a CGM, that's awesome. And I hope that it has really eliminated low blood sugars for you. However, in a case where you don't feel like your CGM is reading right or you feel some of those symptoms I mentioned earlier, I always encourage everyone to do a manual finger stick just to be sure because we never want to take the chance of re reaching severe hypoglycemia. Having frequent lows and having them for a longer period of time. So if you're a type 1 diabetic or you've been a diabetic for a long time and you've been a, an insulin, sometimes we can develop what we call hypoglycemia unawareness. What that is, is literally you have a low blood sugar, but you cannot feel it until it's very critically low. Unfortunately, I have a type 1 diabetics who cannot feel that their blood sugar is low until they're in the 30s, which is absolutely very scary, guys. Well, these people cannot tell their blood sugar is low. They don't have any warning signs. They don't have any of the shakiness. Um, and sometimes a lot of these people will have will get seizures because by the time that the blood sugar will be so low that automatically the seizure is induced without ever having the other side effects first. So this is very scary and this tends to happen with patients who've had hypoglycemia recurrently over and over again that their body stops sensing a low blood sugar reaction, which is why when I have patients that I newly diagnosed with diabetes, I always am very strict about making sure that they are uh, preventing low blood sugars. I, although I don't want their blood sugars to be too high, I also do not want their blood sugars to be too low. Believe it or not, I am more fearful of a low blood sugar than a high blood sugar because a low blood sugar can be extremely life-threatening, whereas a blood sugar of 300 is usually not life-threatening and we can manage that patient much better. So with that being said, guys, uh, the number one way to prevent hypoglycemia unawareness is is one by really managing your blood sugars well and now allowing for your blood sugars to become too low all the time when your body stops sensing low blood sugar reactions. Luckily, as I mentioned, the continuous glucose monitors are very beneficial. I don't have any patient who has hypoglycemia unawareness not on a continuous glucose monitor. I make sure I go back and forth with the insurance if that's a problem to make sure this patient gets one uh, because that is extremely scary for the patient. It's ex extremely scary for us because once that patient leaves my room, I am always nervous about what could potentially happen. Happen. And of course, with patients who have hypoglycemia and awareness, I prefer to keep their blood sugars higher. So I rather have them have an A1C that is not as tightly controlled than a perfect hemoglobin A1C where I'm really risking this patient going too low and obviously having something catastrophic happen. A lot of people will ask me about medical IDs and I do absolutely support medical IDs and they're usually worn as bracelets or a necklace and they provide very important medical information about the person such as you know the patient is a diabetic, they are on insulin, so God forbid you know someone has a, a, you know someone has a severe hypoglycemic reaction you know, they start seizing and once the medical personnel get there, they really have a head start on what's going, what could potentially be going on with that, 
with that person. So I know guys, you know, uh, I'm so glad that we have continuous glucose monitors and this is really changing the game. However, we still have to be mindful that hypoglycemia can happen. Sometimes, you know, you can take the exact same thing, but the day, you know, there's so many different factors that can change your blood sugars that you may not be able to predict. And this is why I always say, and I tell everyone, please make sure that, you know, you are checking your blood sugars, you're, and if you feel like something doesn't feel right, make sure you're checking even more frequently before you eat, after you eat. Um, anytime that you feel something is not right, you always want to make sure that you're double checking. You never want to take the chance where it becomes a medical emergency. So again, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope that I've been able to educate you on hypoglycemia, and I hope that you never have an hypoglycemic reaction. However, if you do, I hope that you found this video helpful, and please share with others who may be on insulin, who might be on a sulfonylurea, that you think this video might help them. I will see you guys all next time. Take care.